Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I've always wanted to do that. Hi, my name is Keo Craver. Um, this, uh, I, I thank you for this opportunity. Um, it's, it's actually kind of therapeutic for me. Um, I just want to tell you about some things that I, I never saw coming and some things I did see coming. Growing up as a kid, I've always wanted to be a professional athlete since I, before I could walk and talk. My mom and dad said all I was doing was running around with a football, so I pretty much knew what I wanted to do since I was a kid. And having that instilled in my head as a kid, um, it was pretty much easy for me to focus on that and keep that dream alive, and I did whatever it took to get there. Um, as you know, I come from a small town in East Texas. I was born in Dallas, Texas, actually. Grew up with three brothers. All of my brothers are six foot two inches tall or better. Right, right. <laughs> I got the short end of the stick, obviously. And, um, you know, but I turned that into a positive because, you know, I had to fight. I actually got their hand-me-down. So, you know, I just, I had to fight. I've always had to fight. I've always had to prove myself. And, um, you know, it's actually made me a part of the person that I am today. So, you know, growing up, I've always been an athlete, been blessed. I thank God for that. And it's opened doors for me. Um, when I, one story that sticks out, when I was 15 years old, I made it to state. I had the worst jump in the state out of the top 10 jumpers. And, um, you know, the, the town where I'm from, Harleton, Texas, is about 800 people in this town. You know, they were just happy that somebody made it to state from this town. They were just like, you know what, just go have fun. Don't worry about anything. Just enjoy yourself. And, you know, part of, the, part of me, you know, listened to that, but I wanted to win. You know, regardless of having the, the worst jump in the state, I still wanted to win. And so, you know, I went there with that mentality. And despite having the worst jump, I won. And, yeah, seriously. And, and we didn't even have a track at my school. So, you know, I, I was blessed. And uh, so, you know, that's actually how I got recruited. I just found the story this out. You know, when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, Nebraska Football Hall of Fame, I was getting re recruited by UNL for track. And, you know, like, we got this kid who's jumping out of the, you know, the pit and don't even have a track. Let's go take a look at this guy. And, you know, they offered me a, a track scholarship, and I was excited about it. And, you know, what ended up happening my senior year, the track coach, Gary Pepin, he, you know, he called down to the office, uh, the football office, got in touch with Coach Solage and was like, Hey, so, you know, are you guys even going to give this kid a scholarship? You know, what are you going to do with Keo Craver? And they were like, you know, who is that? We don't even know who this guy is. You know, so Coach Turner Gill, he ended up, you know, looking at some film. Long story short, Coach Osborne comes to Harleton, Texas, and a town of about 800 people. I mean, we've never had anything like this happen, so you can only imagine. <laughs> Coming from the school, when school was over with, we went to my grandmother's house and Coach Osborne is following me home with Coach Gill and there's about 60 cars following us <laughs> to my grandma's house. I can't make this up, it's, it's, it happened. And you know, we lived across the street from the church. I was telling some people about it yesterday and you know, all these cars park up at the church and it was like a, you know, like a, they were spectating. They just got out the car and just, <laughs> just looking. It was weird, but um, <laughs> Coach Osborne came in, very personable person. You know, my dreams are coming true. I'm, I'm almost at my goal of becoming a professional athlete. Everything that I dreamed was going to happen is happening. You know, praise God. I, you know, my family, when they raised us in the church, they didn't force religion on us, but, you know, my grandmother and my parents drew a lot of strength from, from God and having faith, and they, you know, they taught us that foundation as kids, and, you know, that saved my life pretty much because all of this good stuff is happening and I'll tell you what I didn't see coming. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm at Nebraska. I get offered a football scholarship. You know, I made it big time, so I'm here. This was an adjustment too because I'm from Texas and, you know, we, we do a lot of hunting. We squirrel hunt. You know, we hunt hogs. We, we do a lot of hunting. So I'm on campus the first week, and it's just squirrels everywhere. <laughs> and, I mean, so I, I kind of was like, it, it took, I went back to my Texas way. It was like, man, I can, I can eat that squirrel. I can, I can take the squirrel home right here. So 
you know, I, I called my parents and we talking and that was one of the first things I told them. I was like, we could make a killing on Squirrel. <laughs> and, you know, I could, they, we actually had a conversation about it. It was crazy. But, um, you know, that was, one, that was an adjustment. And, you know, what can I say about Nebraska football? You know, you guys definitely are a big part of Nebraska football. I didn't know much about it until I came up here. Um, it was a great experience. I, I thank God for the experience, the opportunity, the doors that it opened, you know, being able to play alongside some great football players, learn from some of the, you know, the greatest coaches in college football, learn from a great guy like Coach Osborne. Um, it, was, it was definitely an honor. And, you know, it pretty much you got everything handed to you here. You know, they take care of you. You know, you can't do no wrong. And um, I quickly learned that, you know, that everybody's not going to treat you the same everywhere you go. After I graduated, we played in the Rose Bowl. We lost, and, you know, it's still hard to this day to talk about that game. But um, after that game, I was drafted by the New Orleans Saints. You know, my, my lifelong dream has finally come true. I'm a professional athlete. I made it. You know, I've worked hard, I've sacrificed, you know, I've been doubted, people telling me what I wouldn't be able to do, but I still did it. You know, I had a good sense of who I was and I didn't let nobody kill my dream. Um, things were good. You know, I, I made the team, we practiced in training camp, no issues. Playing football was, it, that was the easy part. Um, being a team player, you know, being a professional now, the only thing is I'm making a, a ton of money. Like, it's, it's crazy. People treat you so much differently when you when they know your status. And so, you know, that taught me a lot as well, too, because there were people that I, ne I know I never would have got a chance to meet that were going out of their way to meet me, going out of their way to talk to me about business. And so you have all of, now all of a sudden my life has changed. I have so many people pulling at me, so many people telling me how great I was, you know, even if I do something stupid, nobody there to tell me, hey, that's dumb. People still telling me, hey, you're, you're Keo Craver, you're, you're great, and you know, you can't do no wrong. So, you know, with that mentality, you definitely get arrogant, you get complacent, and I did, and I come from a great home. My mom and my dad, my grandparents, they, you know, everybody raised us on principles, and you know, you never know what you'll do until you're faced in that position. So it was always easy for people to tell you things, but, until they've actually experienced it, you know, it's, it's hard for you to really understand where they're coming from. Um, you know, being in the NFL was a great experience. One thing that, that I remember, we were playing against the, the Green Bay Packers, the game of my life. Brett Favre, you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm a rookie, and Brett Favre, I remember him walking behind the center, and he's getting down, getting ready, and I'm just like, you know, like, I'm starstruck. <laughs> I got my Saints uniform on, but I'm smiling at him like. And, and, and Brett Favre, like, he's, he's a very charismatic guy. Like, he kind of reminds me of, like, I don't know, like, somebody like Obama or Bill Clinton just kind of got that swag and, you know, real tough. And he looked at me, he was like, did he like that? I'm like, damn, I'm communicating with Brett Favre. I'm like, that was crazy. But, um. You know, so I had the game of my life. I ended up scoring a touchdown. I'm making fun of Green Bay. I do Lambo Leap in New Orleans. And um, I ended up tearing my MCL with like two minutes left in the fourth quarter. The game is out of hand. And my knee snaps and I'm on the ground. And it's just like, this can't be happening. This is a dream. And Brett Favre comes over there to me. He's like, Craver, you better get your you know what up. He's like, you played a great game. You cannot lead the field like this. And that was, I'm like, dang, I got Brett Favre telling me. This is, you know, I'm hurting. I'm on the field. I'm helpless. No, you know, I can't do anything. But that was a proud moment for me. You know what I mean? And the thing about it, when, when that happened, it was I, a lot of things that I didn't see coming. So that was all good, not a bad. So, you know, now I'm hurt. Um... It turned completely around. I walk into the locker room the next day, and those coaches is, hey, young guy, Keo Craver, high-fiving you, patting you on the back. You walk in there now with some crutches, and you're looking helpless, and you're looking sick. They don't even look at you. You know, they, they don't even acknowledge you. And so, you know, you, you try to be prideful. You know, you're a grown man. You got to learn things on your own. 
And that's what I tried to do. I didn't try to let it get down to me, but I'm only human. I have never been you know, through this adversity in my life. Up until this point, I pretty much have only had to face the good music, the good news. And so, you know, that was a hard pill for me to swallow. And um, eventually what I did is I just started feeling sorry for myself. And I'm, I'm like, I'm in the NFL. Oh, I, I missed out a big so, so I got this DUI <laughs> right before I get drafted to New Orleans Saints. I was like a first round, potential first round draft pick. I ended up getting a DUI in Phoenix, Arizona, um, maybe like two or three weeks before the draft. And at the time, my agents at the time, they were like, hey, you, you know, it just happened a couple of days ago. When you go to the combine, you know, tell those coaches, it, when every team asks you, have you ever been arrested, just tell them no. You know, tell them you got a speeding ticket or a parking ticket. So, you know, listening to the advice of my agents, I lied to all of these coaches that were basically like my heroes growing up. You know, like uh, Bill Parcells, Bill Cower, um, you know, so many different coaches, head coaches that I really had a lot of, Tom Coughlin, that I really had a lot of, Mike Holmgren, I really had a lot of respect for. And a young kid that didn't know much, I tried to listen to them and it ended up backfiring on me. And my parents.